at the Hubmer Family Farm in Blue Earth County, just south of Mankato. The Hubmers participate in the USDA Conservation Stewardship Program, which promotes sustainable farming practices. They produce non-GMO crops, which they feed to their Berkshire hogs and their free-range chickens. I'm Jill Jones with SPNN, and in this episode of Market, we're going to find out what sustainable farming practices mean to the land, the crops, and the livestock. Hey, Roger. Hello. First, we're going to look at our new building that we just put up this spring. Right on. Many years in the making. This is a truck she takes to the farmer's market. Nice big freezer. Got everything all indexed where the location of all the meat and everything is. Right now, this is running five below zero in there, so it's cold. I guess so. Come on in. These are the chickens here that we raise, different sausages, all brand new components. So we're pretty happy. Should That's last right. for a long time. Looks pretty state of the art. I mean, you're taking your fresh product and it's coming straight from the butcher into here and then we're getting it at the St. Paul Farmer's Market. How about you show us some of the crops outside? Sure. Well, we were losing quite a lot of money just selling pigs on the open market so we switched to the direct marketing this so much more rewarding to sell to customers that can really appreciate the product that you have so Roger what is this ridge tilling that you keep talking about well ridge tilling is a type of tillage we use we don't use the moldboard plow chisel plow field cultivator all we do is is we come in here I planted these soybeans, I actually planted these soybeans right into standing residue. If you can see here, right here is where the old corn row was a year ago, and I planted it right into there. Well, you look at all this residue. Now, what's wrong with that residue? Why do we have to get rid of that residue and plow it under? No need to run a big 300 horsepower tractor to, to bury your residue. I got it right there on top, holes down the weeds, keeps the moisture in, which is real important in, during this drought season here. And it eliminates erosion too because as the raindrops hit it, it doesn't uh, wash the soil away. This ground, this ground is so soft and mellow, and uh, we got it's full of earthworms in here. They do all the aeration for me, makes it very porous and uh, absorbent for water. I experimented with it the first year I did it. The beans that I had on ridges yielded four bushel better than the conventionally uh, raised beans. Does it take more expensive equipment? Less. Less? Less equipment. Here's, here's my ridge steel cultivator right here. This is an Orthman cultivator and uh, here's our cultivator shovels that is kind of sunk in the ground and as you go through it, it, it cuts the weeds off plus as the dirt's coming these ridges, ridges here throw the dirt across and that's that hilling effect that I was telling you about and this this coulter here cuts through that that trash residue as it's going through there so it doesn't plug up these things here nobody's cultivates anymore with all the roundup chemicals that are available so I found this for basically the cost of scrap iron I paid fifteen hundred dollars for this machine new I bet you it would be twenty five to thirty thousand so do you have to fertilize as much because of the way you're doing the ridge till? No, that's another nice thing about it too because we do what you call strip till or banding fertilizer. We're going to come in there this fall and we're going to put our strip of fertilizer right where the corn is going to be planted next year. And so that root is going to be right in the fertilizer instead of broadcasting it over the top. And we can get by with about 50% of the fertilizer that way. I also laid on a cover crop. You can see some of this. This was part of my cover crop. This is vetch. I planted rye and vetch. I spread a bunch of rye and vetch seed out here 
and then this spring I killed it and planted these beans right into it. And the, I don't think these beans look too bad considering we're going through one of the worst droughts we've ever been in. Good deal. Now this here, this is our uh, manure storage right here. This is some of the manure that we scrape out of those gutters in there and it goes down the gutter and it comes out that tube there. And now when we get our soybean crop off of here, this will all go back in there. So if the way I figure it out, if I feed 150 bushels of corn to the hogs, that much manure goes back on the ground. So whatever we take off the ground, we put back on the ground. Farmers are the original recyclers. Right. Comes out of the field, goes into the bin, goes through the hogs, goes into the pit, goes back in the field. That's a, that's the recycling, that's what we do. So to get to where you are today, it seems like you've had to do a lot of adapting and evolving. Yeah, well, it, it's something new every day, just dreaming things up. Um, up in the yard, I got a picture of the farm the way it used to look when it was first built in 1920. No trees, no nothing. And uh, this was originally what it is, and we've added to it in uh, the last 92 years. Looks like you've maintained the foundation of the family farm, but you've added so much more to it and evolved. And we really appreciate you letting us come out here and giving us an inside view of your land stewardship. Thank you so much, Roger. Well, you're welcome.